Okay, what I'd like to do now is to take a look at our trend identification tools, that is the BTX1 line and BTX2 line studies. These are also included in the Ocean Pro library, and since they're among the most potent ocean tools that we have, let's delve into them for a moment and see what they have to offer. All right, here we see yet another market. This is a weekly euro dollar, where I've included the BTX1 line and BTX2 line studies. Note that I've also left the NMA band excursion oscillator on the screen, as well as the triple STX and the regular ocean moving average. The BTX one line study is designed to measure the trend energy of the markets. Since trends can either be bullish or bearish, when measuring trend strength, the BTX one line is therefore non directional. That is, if the BTX one line is rising, it's indicative of an increase in the strength of the trend regardless of the direction of the move. So we have a rising BTX here in a bullish trend and we can have a rising BTX in a bearish trend as well simply sim since we're simply measuring trend strength. Conversely, a declining BTX such as the case here and here indicates a decrease in trend strength. Now for the directionality component of the BTX analysis, we look to the BTX2 line, which we'll discuss in just a moment. Note the horizontal line here at a value of 35. That's our trend threshold. If the BTX is greater than 35, it means that the algorithm has identified that a trend is present. Values less than 35 generally indicate a low to no trend environment. Obviously, having just this information alone is extremely valuable for formulating trading strategies to meet the trend conditions present in the market. For instance, when a trend is identified, the idea is to press the trade, buying or selling termination points of any and all counter trend reactions possible to capitalize on the thrusting nature of the market. Conversely, when the BTX indicates a low to no trend environment, it usually means that the market is experiencing a consolidation of some sort. In this particular chart example, we basically went from bullish trend to bearish trend back to bullish trend, so there wasn't a period of, of increased consolidation which would force the BTX below the 35 threshold for an extended period of time. But in the case of uh, consolidation, it's appropriate to use oscillators that are good at identifying short-term overbought or oversold conditions, such as our NST, NDX, or NXC, to pick off those tops and bottoms. In a trend environment, selling tops and buying bottoms is usually quite different and difficult, but in a consolidation identified by low BTX scores, it's exactly the correct trading strategy to employ. Also, the addition of the statistically sound standard deviation bands, that is the upper band, lower band, and the center moving average that bisects them, adds yet another set of thresholds by which to measure the BTX. And the inclusion of that center line moving average also adds additional information, especially in the BTX2 line, as we'll soon see. Note that due to the sensitivity of the BTX, there's almost no lag associated with it in relation to price action. That is, turns in the BTX are almost always precisely coincident with price turns. Such was the case at this location right here. Um, we can see it here. We'll discuss that in a minute. We can see it here as well. It actually was uh, spot on at this particular low as well. This lack of lag is invaluable for proper analysis and timely detection. Turns at the top in the BTX usually mark the end of trend thrust, and turns at the bottom either signify a new trend thrust after a pause, as in this case, or the possibility of a complete trend reversal. As we'll see, the BTX2 line is instrumental in telling us which type of a BTX low is unfolding. In fact, let's discuss the BTX2 line for just a moment. Here in the bottom subgraph, we see the BTX2 line, shown as the green line here and the red line as well. It too has a trend threshold, shown as this horizontal line in a light blue at a level of 20. When discussing the BTX2 line, 
we usually refer to them as the dominant and subordinate lines, depending on which of them is above or below the other. In this case, the dominant is the green, indicating a bullish trend, and the subordinate is below, uh, as would be the case. Obviously, when the market flips uh, into a bearish climate, the dominant, the red becomes the dominant, and the green drops to a subordinate position. Their positions relative to the trend threshold at 20 is also important. Usually in a trend environment, the dominant line is greater than 20 and the subordinate is at or below 20, as of course was the case throughout this period here. And as I said, there was simply a reversal of, of that situation through this bearish phase as well. Then we go back into a bullish phase and we once again have the 20 line separating the dominant and subordinate. As we've done with the BTX1 line, we've added a set of standard deviation bands around each of the two lines. The green line has its own set of standard deviation bands, that is an upper dashed uh, standard deviation band in a similar color, a lower standard deviation band in a similar color, and the same situation applies for the red line as well, upper standard deviation band and lower standard deviation band shown here. Note also the centerline moving average associated with each of the two lines that bisects the standard deviation bands. As we'll see, it offers a very powerful benchmark to gauge the BTXs as well. This set of additional reference locations provides invaluable information to using the BTX2 line to its full potential. When the dominant line is above its upper SD, the market is usually overbought or oversold depending on which line of course is dominant. And when the dominant line pulls back to its lower standard deviation band while at or above its trend threshold of 20 and hooks back up, as was the case for instance in locations like this and like this, it's a strong indication of a new trend thrust in the same direction as the previous thrust. This pattern is even more compelling if the BTX1 line has also pulled back to its lower standard deviation band, particularly if the pullback is at or near the BTX1 line trend threshold of 35, which was the case here and here as well. Ultimately, all trends end either by the market simply evolving into a consolidation phase or by a sharp V-shaped reversal or some variant of either of them. At any rate, the interplay of the BTX1 line and 2 line is invaluable for identifying the termination of a trend, as well as detecting the directional turn in the market. The process is as follows. First, we monitor the advancing BTX1 line for its numerical value as well as its position relative to its upper standard deviation band. We typically want to see it at a level of 50 or greater and above its upper standard deviation as well for this particular pattern or alternatively generating some sort of divergence versus its prior peak, which was the case in this example right here. Then we note the first bar where the BTX hooks down. For instance, right here we were at a top and we get the first hook down at a BTX value. This is often coincident with the end of a price move, but because this first step may be a bit early, as was the case, for instance, over here, where we get the hook down in effect at a level right here, but we're about three or four bars early, we refer to, in the case like that, the BTX2 line for steps two and three of the confirmation process. When both the dominant, I'm down here on the, the two line now, when both the dominant and subordinate lines cross their respective center line moving averages, so that's step two and three. So for instance, in this case, what happened was that the subordinate line had crossed from below to above its moving average right here in a pinch, which is another subtlety that we'll be discussing later. Uh, you had warning of the fact that this was likely turning bearish, and then the final act of the dominant line crossing from above to below its center line moving average uh, gave us a full case of that. Again, once these sub dominant and subordinate lines cross their moving averages, the price move is typically over, as was the case right here. At that point, one of two things can happen. In the case of a pause in the market, and notice that back here we had a similar situation. Here we are with the first turn down in the BTX1 line. 
we then are monitoring the relative positions here of the dominant and subordinate lines. At this point, they both cross their center line moving averages. But what can happen here in the case of a pause is that the dominant line simply reaches its lower SD band while still above its trend threshold of 20 and then turns back up, indicating that a new directional thrust is likely to be underway. Alternatively, if the dominant line simply continues down and crosses the subordinate line, which was the case right here, the trend has reversed. There are, of course, subtleties to this pattern that can give us early warning, but that's a subject to be explored more fully in the detailed BTX video. There are many other patterns and formations related to the BTX lines that make it one of the most critical elements in ocean-based analysis, but for the sake of brevity in this introduction, we have all the information we need to understand the locations marked on the chart. Since the NMA band excursion here, as well as the triple STX and regular ocean moving average are also displayed, note how the interplay and synergy between them reinforces the messages coming from these BTX studies. That is, at locations like this, we've got um, advancing conditions here by virtue of the fan position of the triple STX. Notice the penetrations of one or two bar durations from the triple STX that we had discussed previously. Oversold conditions from the NMA band excursion here and here. Crossovers of the NMA um, band excursion centerline moving average. Another pinch here and another crossover of the moving average here as well. Basically, these reinforcing messages are, are going to be critical to your proper use of the ocean tools. And in my opinion, when these patterns set up, it makes reading the market a really simple process.